There we go, right? There should be sound now. Alex Yang, you can hear me now, right? And there'll be a six-second delay, so I might just say things. For, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so starting from the other stream. Jeez. Henrik Madsen, have you heard anything about Kaman's tip roof? It's still coming to Kickstarter. I have not heard anything in quite some time, sadly. It is... Um, it's something I'm excited for, despite being very app resistant in general as a concept. But the Tabru promises a a system that, if you watch my video with Board Game Coffee, where we we actually talked about it, they actually experienced it. Board Game Coffee, Mark and Brittany, Maya, they were able to experience the Tabru system, and they said it's amazing. And I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be the kind of thing that lends itself to a particular type of game night. It will not be something I pull out all the time. I do not like phones or computers or anything at my game night, um, unless they're in a, they're in a minimalistic sense. But I'm excited. I want to see what it does, what it adds to the genre, and whether it's worth it. From there, and by the way, if you don't see these questions, I'm pulling them from the the live stream I canceled because I picked the wrong software, apparently. Uh, so, and you can't change it, apparently. So, Henrik Madsen, do you think the premise of one versus all games are dead? I don't think they were ever, ever popular enough to decry them as being dead because there are a limited amount of them. I could be wrong, but there has been, for instance, the newest one, the one that's most that's going to hit very shortly is by Skybound Games, and it's, uh, I don't remember the title. Let me pull up. From Kickstarter, the Skybound Games game, where where it's the Va Valor, Valor, Valor and Villainy Minions of Mordek, and that's the most recent one. But they're they're a rare genre to begin with, so I don't know if we can really call them dead. If there are, you know, were not many to begin with, and not many now, I like the concept of them. Uh, in execution, there's interesting to actually balance them and do them well. I do like the concept of, if you can see behind me, Rise of Moloch over there. That's a one versus many that my wife and I play as a two-player head-to-head fighting game. So I guess, you know, most one versus many, if you control enough characters, you could do that. But I don't know if I could call them dead. What's your top three most anticipated Kickstarters coming to Kickstarter in 2021 or coming to Kickstarter or coming from Kickstarter? So uh, as usual, I don't know the answers offhand. Coming from Kickstarter, well, I just got Brook City. You can expect an unboxing of that on Saturday. I have, what else do I actually have expected? Kingdom Rush, I'm very psyched about. I remember that. I'd have to look through. Uh, Bloodbound, oh my gosh. I just saw a picture of what the Blood Bloodborne, not Bloodbound, Bloodborne of what the Bloodborne all-in pledge looks like, and that is intimidating. It's like the kind of thing that you see it and you're like, whoa, maybe I should just sell this before I, before it gets its hooks in me. So that's probably up there. Uh, past that, my most anticipated Kickstarters from Kickstarter. I don't know. I'd have to take a look to see. I really should prep some of these. I, maybe I'll just open up my Kickstarter tab over here and see what I have coming. Uh, because there's a lot, there's a lot that I'm very excited about. It's just I just don't remember them offhand because there's like 50 or 60 of them, and at no given point do I. Oh, um, Planet Unknown is definitely up there. I think that's accessible, and these days I prioritize accessibility over anything else. Endless Winter will obviously be on that list again. Accessibility uh, doesn't matter how amazing you are, how big you are. If you can't, if you're not hitting the table, that's what I mean. Bloodborne. I'm excited about Bloodborne, but it's it looks intimidating. As far as games coming to Kickstarter, I don't generally have um as knowledgeable uh, in the future thing as as general but there is a game i think it is bloodbound this one i think bloodbound from sky skybound games is going to be on that list somewhere so i have to take a look i don't know what's coming to kickstarter offhand i have to think about it uh looking at the next question henrik madsen any kickstarter you know will be announced coming to kickstarter next year you cannot wait for it nothing i can't wait for my hype train tends to not really hit until unless I'm involved in the game, like Endless Winter, I was hyped about because I had been playtesting it for months before. Uh, not playtesting, I had had multiple plays of it before it came to Kickstarter, so I was hyped about that. Most of the time, I don't bother overly looking into into Kickstarter in terms of what's going to be like. And people talk about like, oh my gosh, Hell or ISIS Vanguard. These things are all so amazing. I, I don't I don't do my my heavy amounts of research until they're on Kickstarter because like take Primal. Primal is a great example of. Primal is a great example of a, a company, of a, of a game that was very hyped, very talked about, and then just got delayed enough. And so that kind of, I don't want to build up my hype train only to, it's, waiting a year and a half for Kickstarter is already enough of a wait. I don't need to wait for it to come to Kickstarter. What's the most beautiful game you have, not the best, from Wesley Vanderbrook? The most beautiful game I have, not the best. I don't know. These are good questions. I have to look around. What is the most beautiful game? I'm very excited about... It's not here yet. I'm very excited about Merchants of the Dark Road or Deep Road. I think Dark Road. Uh, that one is absolutely gorgeous. The production quality is through the roof. In terms of beautiful games I have, 
Uh, Super Fantasy Brawl is pretty nice looking. I don't know. I'd have to think. Beautiful games are good. Oh, Everdell. Everdell. Probably Everdell. I love the art in that game. I love the... Yeah, absolutely beautiful. I'm going to go with Everdell for that. Okay. Um, okay, now I'm going to switch over to the to the new channel, to the new questions. And by the way, uh, uh, Sild Safing, if you want to clarify, how did you start? How did I start Board Game Code, the YouTube channel, or Board Game Code, the company? Uh, but And I'll get to that when I see your answer. Okay, then we have John Mendoza, no sound, because I fixed that by now. Then we have JJ the Great. In the Frostbank video, you say that you do not like survival games. However, you enjoy pandemic and tower defense games in which the objective is to survive. What is the distinction? And I think I got this question last uh, stream. It's possible that, that I know someone said something about my answer getting cut out briefly last stream, so that could be this one. But nonetheless, it, the answer is that I, it's not about survival as a theme. theme. Survival as a theme, I don't care about. It's survival in the sense that I don't like it when a game is constantly taking things away from you. They're constantly making you less powerful, less able to be a competent player. Uh, when a game punishes you for being in the game, and a good example of this is Nemo's War, which I really did not like Nemo's War. And it's a great game, top 100. It's a good indicator. As usual, my opinion is my opinion. My opinion does not mean a game is good or bad. There are many games in the top 100 I do not enjoy, or that's not true. There are many games in the top 100 I don't keep. There are a few games in the top 100 I didn't enjoy, and Nemo's War is one of them. But Nemo's War is a game in which as the game progresses, your your stats get lower and lower in the game. You start off here and you move lower and lower. And I, I don't like it when games take things away from you. I would much rather a, a Zombicide, a Cthulhu Death May Die, uh, a Gloomhaven, in which the your, you level up as the other side levels up. Make me feel more powerful and then make the other side powerful to match. Don't don't punish me. Don't destroy my buildings. Don't take away my population. Don't make me feel like it's hard to survive in the game just from a stance of my abilities and my, my structures, my engine, all that. Uh, life is hard enough without adding that to a board game. As far as win or lose or survival as a theme, that is not my issue. Survival as a theme doesn't bother me. It's I don't care about the theme of survival. It's just don't don't make me if, if let's say let's say we're playing pandemic and you made it that as the game progressed i had fewer actions then i would not like that um atlantis rising has that to a degree and i'm not a huge fan of that either it gives you fewer options as the game progresses it's one of the reasons atlantis rising lost over pandemic uh it does give you more stuff as well but i don't like that the fact that as the game progressed in atlantis rising you got less and less powerful your ability to roll dice and get what you wanted was harder i, I just don't like things being taken away from me in games uh, give me more and give the bad guys more too First question, Stenebro. First question, who did you vote for? Oh, okay, we're doing this. So um, I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm actually, not actually going to take the easy way out because, well, have you met me? Uh, to begin with, I didn't vote. Uh, I am Canadian with a green card, and I don't believe – I'm not a citizen yet. I don't, I, don't, I don't vote in any of the elections. As far as who did I support, should I do this? Um, I despise – Donald despises the wrong word. I think Donald Trump is a childish caricature of a person. Uh, I am generally Republican leaning. I'm generally right leaning. If you want to have a conversation about why ever, I mean, I'm, I'll answer any questions. I think that both sides, I think that the biggest problem we have nowadays is the complete lambastment of any side. When you sit there, and I mean, half the country voted for each politician. And yes, we can quibble 47%, whatever it is. There is a huge amount of people in this world that have a different difference of opinion than ourselves. And the fact that people are writing off their friends, the people they respect, people they know, they're writing them off on either side, on either side, whoever you are. You know someone who voted for, for Bernie Sanders, and you're like, well, how can he afford his tax? But I don't care. Is he smart? Is he your friend? Do you know him? Why, or do you, why are you suddenly discounting his or her opinion just because they don't agree with you for the first time? It's The, the political divide in this country is, is sad. And I think that I mean I think any number of people who voted for Biden voted for voted for Biden as a vote against Trump. And I understand that. Like I said, I don't like Trump. I do lean Republican on a, I do lean right on a lot of issues. Uh, I would say in most cases I would vote uh, right. In this particular election, I was really hoping for uh, uh, what's it called um, Andrew Yang. I really wanted him to get further because I thought he represented a good shift towards the middle, which is really. It's really what I want to see. Uh, things only get worse. And even when Trump, even when Biden won, which I mean. I, the whole overturning thing is crazy. It's Biden won. Uh, even when we see that, I I think that I saw lots of people who were happy to try to bridge the divide and say, you know, great, let's reach out our hands. Let's try to grow together. And I saw people who were like, screw anyone who voted for Trump. It's, these things are only going to get worse. They're only going to get worse. And I'm just, I'm not, it's, yeah, 
I wish people talked to each other more. I wish people cared less about politics than they did. Uh, I understand that there will be people who will say that that is a privileged opinion, that I can afford to care less about politics. And I, I respect that. But yeah, it, it, this country, people need to come together more than they need to tear each other apart. That's, that's it's what it is. Okay. Next question, buzzkill time. What generally, Neofine Flame Match, which what generally gets you to back a game on Kickstarter that isn't a good value proposition? Uh, generally, FOMO. Uh, FOMO is usually going to be the biggest thing. If you give me a combination of a game that I really want to get my hands on, combine that with the fact that I'm not certain of its retail availability or retail pricing, meaning even if I think it's a bad value, but I'm less certain, FOMO will be the biggest uh, factor. If I like a, if I like a game enough, I like, it's like Endless Winter is a good example. Endless Winter, to the first few days of their campaign, had this whole thing going on where it wasn't really clear how things would play out in terms of their, what, what was exclusive, what wasn't. And that's because they were engaging with a bunch of partnerships with publishers and all that. And in that case, I would have happily backed that game even if it was $30, $40 more because I, I really enjoy that game and I, wasn't, I wouldn't have wanted to take a chance that I was wrong about its availability in any way. So FOMO is going to be the biggest factor. The second biggest factor is going to be if the price point is cheap enough that we're talking about a few dollar difference and I want to try the game out. Uh, Lil Chin Ho, I've done zero board gaming since COVID. I am sorry, uh, try online. Uh, for the first few months of COVID, I played games on Yukata with my friends. We set up a Zoom call. We played online together, got a lot of gaming in that way. It, it's COVID has 100% changed the way and frequency that I play games. But at the same time, it is it, it shouldn't be a detractor. If anything, it actually helped uh, me bridge relationships with the friends of mine who have moved away that I would talk to here and there. But now I'm talking to more and I'm engaging with more. And so uh, there are ways to game with COVID. Yogi Beer, I'm literally, literally thinking about backing Burn Cycle just because of the subsidized shipping if I also added too many bones. It's a reasonable reason to consider backing it. That's what it comes down to. Alex Yang, Neophyr, Neomorphosis price fluctuation, wild ride, ups and downs, your insight. Neomorphosis is a tough one. I am interested in that game, and I'm finding myself less interested because no one seems – not no one. That's not true. It's $200,000. Few, fewer people seem to care about the game than I thought would. And I'm finding myself questioning, should I just you know, wait the secondhand market? It will probably be more expensive at first. It might be hard to get my hands on. I also have three Zombicides, Black Plague, Massive Darkness, the whole giant Bloodborne coming. I have a ton of stuff. So I find myself fluctuating on Neomorphosis and questioning whether I am willing to back it versus picking it up later. I think it still is a good back, to be clear. I'm just, I'm in that place where I have an overload of content and that that affords me to make decisions about not getting things if I'm not dead certain I want it. Uh, for right now, I'm still all in on my pledge. I'm keeping an eye on it. I, later today, I'll be filming, filming my whole, uh, you know, um, should you back it series and doing all my stuff. I tend to make decisions when I'm doing those videos as I'm, I tend to make those final calls as I go through those videos. Alex Yang, nope, Alexander Mel, which games do you regret not backing on Kickstarter the most? It's going to be a small list. Um, at one point, Madara was one, but I've then managed to trade for a pledge. And now I'm regretting that because I have an overload of campaign games. There's just nothing against Madara. It's a great game. I just, I just don't have time for these things. And then we have what games do I regret not backing on Kickstarter the most? I had a list at one point somewhere. There's going to be very few. Uh, for the most part, I would say I regret backing things more than I regret not backing them. Um, I mean, and sometimes it's just because I find out later, but it's nothing comes to mind offhand. Uh, Nurse Rubin, shalom. I'm curious to know your opinion of... Sorry, I'm curious to know your opinion of Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Is it worth $100? I have Twilight Imperium on my shelf. I haven't played it. If you don't see yourself playing an 8-hour game, then it's not worth $100. If you do see yourself playing an 8-hour game, I'd recommend trying it out. I mean, people seem to like that one, so it's worth giving a shot. Then we have Nurse Ruben. Nope, Adam knew it. Did you back Hyperspace? No, I did not. I did not back Hyperspace. I'm seeing I'm falling behind the chat questions here, which is always fun because if I fall too far behind, then I get comments. We're going to get back to politics in a second as soon as I, people see my thing. Nurse Rubin, do you consider yourself an Orthodox Jew? I mean, yes, I got the whole yarmulke and everything. I, I don't know what else I can do to be more Orthodox. I keep Shabbos, so I'm not online on Saturdays. That's why, why you will see my my responses to comments coming in Saturday night and Sunday, because I'm not online Saturdays or holidays or anything like that. Keep kosher, wear the whole stuff, pray. I do all the things that Orthodox Jews do, so I'm going to go with a strong yes on that one. Uh, then we have... Pimento Loaf, where did you get that hoodie? I got it from Kohl's last Black Friday. It's one of my favorite hoodies. I plan on picking up some more this year, either Black Friday or just, I don't, it's not, it's not that I need a way for Black Friday. It's just, I just don't go shopping much. I tend to go shopping once a year for all my clothes and then like buy a few, you know, I don't know, t-shirts during the summer. So I got this last Black Friday at Kohl's for like 25 bucks. Uh, I really like it actually. It's uh, I like the, the the fit, the comfort, the look. I'm a big fan of it. And I actually want to pick this up in another color because they had it in another color too. 
uh, Sild Safing, how did you start Board Game Co? Didn't we already? I, oh, you you questioned that. Okay, I got that. Okay. Alexander Mel, how do you like Tarji? Do you see it on my shelf? Yeah, you do. Okay, there it is. Uh, Tarji's great. A uh, solid two-player experience. Give it a shot on Board Game Arena if you haven't tried it. I love the, it's roughly 30, 45 minutes. I love the tit for tat, you know, worker placement, getting in each other's way. A uh, solid game. Uh, not my top 50, not by a long shot, but a solid game that has a right fit in my collection. Lenny95, or Nurse Ruben, how did you get into board games? My brother-in-law, uh, maybe in 2011, 2012, my brother-in-law brought over a game called Stone Age, which you know by now, and we played it, and I enjoyed it. And then he brought over a few months later Small World, and we played that and enjoyed that. I had already played Catan and Carcassonne as a kid growing up, and I was like, wow, now we have four games that are actually good. Maybe there's a whole hobby here. And I started looking into it, and before you knew it, I was spending $500 a year on board games because, well, that's what we do sometimes. So that's basically a short version. 2011, my brother-in-law. It's all thanks to him. Then we have Nurse Ruben. Nope. Okay. Uh, Lenny, V95. Lenny V95. I'm still on the fence about Endless Winter. I tend to compare it with games like Architects of the West Kingdom and Raiders of the North Sea. Do you think it's better than those? I'm the wrong person to ask that question to because I was not a fan of those games. It's not true. I liked Architects of the North West Kingdom and Raiders of the North Sea. I did not like either of them enough to keep them. So I appreciate them. I thought they were good. I just didn't love them and was not in a rush to add those to my collection. So I love Endless Winter, but if you like Architects of the West Kingdom, then I'm already not the right person to be asking because I thought it was good. I just didn't keep it. Uh, Lord, Mort Lord Mortis, I'm not even trying to do that. What's your view on Harry Potter, Cast the Snitch, and Night Games in general? I don't know enough about Night Games. I haven't dug into them as a company. I know there's some background there. Harry Potter, Cast the Snitch is an example of people not knowing how to communicate to people. It's just a mistake. I don't, I don't wish them any will. I think they're making stupid missteps in the way that they handle the entire thing. But I don't think it comes from malice. I just think it comes from a lack of awareness. There's a, a quote, and someone's going to quote it, that something's razor. But never attribute to malice that which you can attribute to stupidity i think they are making missteps i do not think they are horrible people i do not think they're a horrible company i think they are, are making missteps in their marketing strategy and the way they attack they, they, they structure things and the way they communicate to their backers i wish them all the best i wish them that they should get their footing on how to manage that if you look back into my own history of board game co as a company there are times where i engaged with people on forums in a way that was stupid because sometimes people have to make mistakes in order to improve themselves, in order to figure out how to communicate. They will figure it out over time because you'll get enough pushback on the things that are stupid. So I think I, I think Harry Potter Cash Snitch is probably an easy pass for me, just, just on their missteps alone. Um, but there will be an audience. It's Harry Potter and Quidditch with cool miniatures. So, I mean, yeah, uh, good luck backing it. I'll check it out at retail if there's enough interest or whatnot. Still stuffing. So how did I start Board Game Co. the company? The very short version, um, I'll actually link to a podcast down below that goes through it, but the very short version is in 20... I got into gaming in 2011, which we just touched upon. 2012, I started just building up more and more games. In 20... Somewhere in that range, I started trading games myself because I had so many games and I unplayed games and whatnot. And I started trading and found that the people online trading didn't trade one-to-one -one because it's just inefficient and people traded in bulk. So I set my whole collection up for trade with taking a huge risk and basically saying, here's all these games. I had like 400 games that I hadn't played. I just set them all for trade and then started looping in these trades and was able to see that there was a market for people who wanted larger trades. And you could even ask more in value because you saved on enough shipping and enough convenience and enough whatever that you can get more in value back. Uh, rinse, repeat until I had like 1500 games in my basement in 2014, at which point I realized there's like a real company here and not just, you know, me getting free games, not free games, but cheaper games. And that's when I turned into a real company, moved it to North Carolina. We have five employees now. It's a, it's a fun thing. It's a tough operation to run. It's not a lot of money in it. So if you think that there's, um, you know, this is, this is it's not, sorry, if I want, if I want, the way I put it is this, if I want money, my day job pays the most. And if I want fun, YouTube is the most. Uh, board Game Co. the company is this middle ground where it's like a little more fun than my day job and a little, I mean, less money than whatever. So it, it's, it's not a money maker, but it is, it's, I, I like having a board game company. It has its perks, but yeah. Any plans to rebrand your channel, like the logo, intro video, and stuff? I do plan on doing things with the intro video or putting in an intro clip or whatnot. I don't have any specific plans to rebrand the channel. If there's a reason you think I should, let me know. Uh, for myself, yeah, I mean, if you have any thoughts, I'm open to them. I'm always open to anything. Senebro, which major sport do you enjoy, and do you still enjoy any of them currently? None. 
none whatsoever. I am not a sports person at all. Uh, playing sports, I kind of enjoy. Following sports, not in the slightest, like the furthest thing. Unless we're counting esports, I've I've watched some esports. Not super interested in it, but hey, a little bit. Alexander Mel, has Ricky been teaching you how to pay attention to detail more? Yes, Ricky. So Ricky, my daughter, was in her first video on the channel. Went up yesterday for Comfort Creatures. Check out that game. It's going on Kickstarter on the 17th. Adorable little game. And she had fun doing that video. It was her first video on the channel. She wants to do a bunch more. Uh, I, I had fun with her on it. She, she's a little character, and I like introducing her. We waited. I, my, my, my younger children may or may not make appearances because I want, I want kids to be old enough to in some way understand the consequences of their actions before becoming a public figure to a small degree. Uh, I think a nine-year-old is still limited in her understanding of that, but we've had discussions about what it means. And as long as we keep a close rein on it, we're, we're playing with it. Okay. Uh, good morning, Alex. Good morning, Makush. How are you today? Nathaniel Robinson. Hi, Alex. Do you ever fear turning into a more a mere board game collector? No. <laughs> have you seen my uh, have you seen my my collection updates where I get rid of everything? I don't keep games I'm not playing. Uh, I do have a longer backlog of unplayed games than I would like, but I still keep enough control over it. In fact, I've used Board Game Co. this this YouTube channel as an excuse to push me into playing more games, to push me into into playing more games when I'm tired. You know that feeling at the end of a long day where you're like, I'm going to play a game tonight. I'm going to play a game tonight. I'm going to play a game tonight. Oh, wait, it's nine o'clock. I'm going to go to bed soon. So so that feeling is real and it's prevalent in my life too. And I'm using Board Game Co. the channel to push me into playing games. Now it's nine o'clock and no, I'm going to play a game because I have to get a review up and I need to get a few more games in before I can review it. So I'm going to play a game tonight. I'm using it as a push. And you never regret it when you do play a game, but you sometimes you need that little push. And I'm using Board Game Co., the, the YouTube channel, to push me into playing more games. So I don't fear that. How much content for Too Many Bones do you own and have played? I own everything for Too Many Bones. I have played the base game and a bunch of the characters. I haven't explored anywhere near enough of the content. Uh, when I think, I frequently think about getting rid of a lot of my campaign games. And if or when it happens, you can bet that Too Many Bones will be right there on my shelf. It's going to be the thing that makes me get rid of a lot of other games because I love that game. Button Polyps. Hi, Alex. Great channel. Family are new to the hobby. Can you talk about recommendations for good weight gateway games for three to four players? Currently playing Sagrada, Jamaica, Pandemic, and King Domino. All good choices already. Um, I put up a list, a video recently, top 10 games I play with my wife and kids. And you should check that one out. That's going to have a good recommendation, a good list. I also have a good another list for games that were fun to play with uh you know, my kids and whatnot, or games that are good. I can't remember the name of the title. It was a while ago. That's another one. There's going to be both a lot of suggestions in both those videos. McScronjun, just watching Tom Vassal ripped apart Kraft Heinz Variety Game Pack. I have no idea what the Kraft Heinz Variety Game Pack is. I'll be sure to check that out. Uh, Werner, hello from Guatemala. Hello, Werner. Good to see you here. Sandeep, what are your, who are your top three board game YouTubers and why? Okay, so I'm going to eliminate out of hand Quackalope because, well, that guy's just that guy, but really because I work with him enough and I think I'm going to eliminate that. Um, I'm, I'm debating eliminating Sarah Shaw board games in a minute because, again, I, I, I've been working with her now since ever since stalking her on all the videos where I promote her. I have, uh, I'm going to eliminate her too. So outside those two, who are my top three board game YouTubers? I'm going to say Board Game Coffee is going to be one of them. I love their channel. I, I did a collab with them as well, but I, I absolutely – they put up a video – for uh, Power Rangers, the card game, which I'm actually going to be talking about in my Kickstarter roundup today, but they it, it, they're, just, they're just so funny. They are an absolute joy to watch. Uh, next up in top of in terms of top three board game YouTubers, I'd have to go through my list. I have a long, long list of people. Um, I could just cheat and say uh, Board Game Coffee, Quackalope, and Sarah Shaw board games in a minute. Um, I'd have to think about it. I actually have a whole list. I have lists of videos planned of, you know, covering more board game YouTubers in different categories, more basically, I did a top 10 board game YouTubers a while ago. I plan on doing more of them because I, I, I like talking about people in this industry and in the hobby. I like connecting with people and I like, I like inviting people to collaborate, to make friends. It's, it's fun for me. So you can expect more of those. In fact, maybe, maybe Tuesday, there's one of them coming already. In any case, hi, Alex, Indira. Hi, hi, Indra. Hi, Alex. Okay. Well, hi, Indra. Where in Canada were you from? Why did you leave Canada for the U.S.? John Mendoza. I left Canada for the U.S. because I was dating my wife. Uh, she was still in school here, and I had just finished. I just graduated from York University in Toronto, so I was leaving neither school nor work, and she would have had to leave school. Additionally, houses in Toronto were, you know, I don't know, a uh, million dollars, and houses in Cleveland were, you know, we bought our first house for $93,000. So that's a good incentive to leave, and that would be ultimately why I left. Drew Teo, will you ever get sick of board games? If so, what would be your next hobby? Um, 
can I go? No, 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 no. I'm not listening. I don't know. Um, I don't anticipate getting sick of board games. I've been in a lot of hobbies. I've done magic. I've done magic. I've done magic gathering. I've done magic. I've done juggling. I've done drawing. I've done a bunch of different hobbies over the years. Historically speaking, my hobbies have lasted me around two years or so on average. Some a little three, maybe four. You know, they don't last forever. Board games, I've been in strong since 2011. That's nine years. And I am just more and more hooked into this. I love what it brings to the table. I love everything about it. Uh, the closest similarity would be Magic the Gathering, which I eventually got out of because it was just it was just too expensive to keep up and constantly iterate and tweak your deck. I, th I like the more closed system of board gaming. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the only LCG I own right now is Marvel Champions. I try to limit LCGs for the same reason. Uh, as far as what would be my next hobby, I don't know. RPGs? I, don't, I can't see myself doing RPGs. It's almost heartbreaking rewatching all the previous presidents wishing the success as well. I know, I know. It's, yeah, I'm going to try to skip past these politics comments unless I see anything that's actually interesting. Um, in any case, okay, there we go next. You have a lot of courage. Okay, one second. Sorry, I missed the sometimes this chat thingy jumps. Uh, okay. Uh, discussing pol You have a lot of courage for discussing politics. I wasn't actually answer that. Well, if you didn't expect me to answer the vote question, why do you ask it? Uh, that's, dude. I just I, I can't I'm not interested in bringing politics into the channel, but I can't I can't bring myself to shy away from a conversation. It's just it's not who I am as a person. Uh, Alexander Mel, do you and your wife have the same taste in games? Did you bring her into the hobby? Uh, we have overlap in our taste in games, and I, I guess I brought her into the hobby. I think that's not true. We discovered the hobby together. Uh, we played all those starter games I told you about, Stone Age, um, the Small World, Catan, Carcassonne. We played all those together. My first games that we we bought, we we played all those games together. Pandemic, Castle of Burgundy, some of the the Seven Wonders, some of the original games I still own were games we played together. Over time, I branched out because over time we played the same two player lighter games. Together together and then i branched up to having a game group so my taste in games has evolved so we still share a lot of the same taste but i certainly have evolved into playing much more heavier cutthroat uh, intense strategy games than she prefers now don't get me wrong she doesn't shy away from from intense strategy but she certainly uh delves into it less than i do warner fernando for me COVID basically cut up my gaming so i'm sorry i hate i hate hearing that look into online stuff there are so many options to connect with people and play games in a way that is not the same but but also lets you play with people who you might otherwise not have played with. Stenenbro, how important is it for you to look for games that you think your wife will enjoy playing with your two players? I mean, it depends how you phrase the question. No single game has to be a game that I'll play with my wife, but I certainly look for games that I will play with my wife because, well, I like playing with her, and she's one of my main gaming opponents. She, I think she might be my most, I think she's the person who I have the most games played with. So it's important to me to have new two-player games to play with her on a regular basis, but they're not the only thing I look for. Endless Winter over Shogun no Katana. Seems like you preferred Winter. Yes, yes, I preferred Winter. Shogun no Katana is an excellent game, a game that I'm happy to add to my collection. And if, if you are someone who says you prefer a meteor puzzle that is much more thinky, and if you like games like Pipeline, if you like games like Agricola, Cavern, I don't know any good examples offhand, but if you like heavier strategy, then I would say Shogun no Katana is probably heavier. If you like doing a little more stuff and having a little bit more fun, I like Endless Winter. I like the deck building and worker placement of Endless Winter more than the intense, okay, if I place my guy here, then I'll get this thing and I'll put my family in the palace over here and then I'll I'll decorate my sword here. Shogun no Katana feels a little bit more tense as you optimize around it. Endless Winter feels a little more open. Uh, I like both. I prefer Endless Winter. Indra, how many Kallax shelves do you have filled? I have all these over here, a 5x5, five five, a 5x5, five five, and a 4x5, a 3x5 over there. So do the math in there. I don't know, 70, somewhere in that range. Uh, Hendrik Madsen, any Kickstarter games you know that are coming to Kickstarter you are excited about? Uh, Bloodstone, I think, from, from Skybound Games is coming to Kickstarter. Offhand, in the recent upcoming, I am very excited about uh, USS Freedom. Uh, they're coming to Kickstarter on the 17th, so two days from now. I really enjoy that game. I don't think it's going to be for everyone, and I don't think they have the audience that ISS Vanguard has, but I am loving the puzzle that's being presented. Some aspects are a little fiddly. I'm still talking with them about what's final and what's not, but I, I really am enjoying USS Freedom. It's whimsical, it's funny, and I'm having a blast set up on my table right now in the middle of going through the campaign. Uh, Shalom, Shalom Shabbos. Okay, I, I think. I don't know. Shoma Shabbos. Shoma Shabbos? Shoma Shabbos. I know an Andrew. So Shoma Shabbos. I don't know. Shomer Shabbos. Yes. Shomer Shabbos is the concept that someone keeps Shabbos, that they take off Saturday. Uh, hi, Gustavo Lopez. Hi from Spain. You have many followers here. My question, did you back Company of Heroes? I did not. I looked at that Kickstarter when it first came out, and I 
I what's it called? I looked at the Kickstarter when it first came out. It didn't pull me in. World War II as a theme in general doesn't pull me in as much as other themes, and so I didn't back that one. Neoprene Playmat, play, play mat. you said you traded for a pledge of Madara. How does one trade for a pledge? It's going to be a change in delivery address. So it is a little bit more risky in the sense that by the time you found out something went wrong, it might be a problem. But it's basically just a change in delivery address. I don't do it frequently. I believe I've done it three times in total. I try to avoid it because it makes me a little uncomfortable and I try to be on top of it. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's a problem at all. It's just something to be on top of and be aware of. Nathan know Robinson, is there any reviewer here whose opinion you trust implicitly? Opinion. So I'm not sure. Can you clarify? I'll get to the question. Can you clarify what you mean I, my opinion aligns with theirs or whether I just think that they're not going to give an opinion, whether they're either either biased or or just do previews? I'm not sure.
hello, hello. How long have I been going? Jeez. Okay. So apparently, my headset just cut out. Woohoo! Note to self, always pay attention to the most recent comments. 27 minutes. Wow. Okay. Jeez. Um, this is fun. And people didn't... You know what? You guys are awesome. You see, the view count, the people who are, are who are like watching, I see the count, and people weren't dropping off. Uh, Freak Rooks, if he's not looking at the chat where he's getting the questions from, I'm looking at the chat. I'm just way too far behind. Uh, this could be a clever way of avoiding audio. I'm just counting up. Oh, my gosh. This is hilarious. Okay. Let me open this in a new tab over here so I can see both the new and live questions as we go. Well, we'll do a timestamp in terms of showing people. Okay, we amuse yourselves while you're waiting. Okay, great. I'm gonna keep my, so now I have two chats open, my star bar over here, and time to go back to, I don't know, somewhere over here. I'll just pick a place. Uh, Stenenbro, have you been to, I wonder what I missed. This is a shame. Uh, I actually have three monitors, JJ the Great. So I have three monitors, one up here, one down here, and one over here where I now see the most recent questions. Uh, you're too funny, love this channel. Five minutes muted, unbelievable. Okay, so apparently I should note to self, plug in my headset before I do a new live stream. Lost well, yet the Madara question. So how do you trade for Madara? Let's go back and just pick up where we were. This time I will have this stuff over here. Okay, I'm way too far back now. The joys of live streaming indeed. Lost sound, unbelievable. Okay, where we go? Uh, I'm just gonna start from over here. Gabe Logan, for Cycle, we want to include a Kickstarter exclusive of the game in the box for your game room. Do you think it's a great idea? I wish all my games the coaster of their box art. So speaking for myself, Gabe, um, I don't value posters in uh, Kickstarters and games. Uh, there are, there might be those who do. I haven't really seen it as a particularly desired thing in terms of, you know, um, in terms of Kickstarters that I haven't seen posters or artwork in a box as something that people particularly care about. So do your own research, I guess. It's not something I'm aware of. Uh, Stenebro, when do you hope to get your American citizenship? So I started the process. I actually started the process of doing my American citizenship right before COVID hit. I started, I filled out my form, and then the entire country, the entire country just, you know, shut down. And so I, I snoozed it, but I hope to get that eventually. Anthony Vasquez, did you get your copy of Dwellings of Eldervale? What did you think? I did not get my copies of Dwellings of Eldervale because, well, not because, I just didn't get it yet. I hope to get it. Um, Alexander Mel, what was your favorite question you answered when muted? I'm desperately trying to figure that out. I, I, I was talking and, and no one heard me. It's heartbreaking. Um, it's not heartbreaking. It's just that I like, I like the fact that, I don't know, I feel there were fun things that I talked about. I don't remember. I'm trying to like find this area in the chat over here, but it is what it is. Uh, what would be, so John Mendoza, what game would be your favorite uh, game to play in competitive all-day round robin tournament. Uh, really, it's just going to be any of my favorite games. I don't like the idea of playing any game in competitive all-day round robin. So in terms of my favorite games, it would have to be Innis, Blood Rage, uh, Terraforming Mars, anything along those lines. Nurse Rubin, what's, what are some of your favorite video games of all time? Far Cry? I don't play a lot of video games anymore, so Far Cry is going to be uh, one of them that I still do play whenever they come up with a new one. Um, not to know Robinson, where in North Carolina is the company? It's in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. Stenebro, have you ever considered homeschooling? Not really. Um, it, I just that seems like too much work, honestly. My wife is a teacher, so she has the ca capabilities. But then again, she's a teacher, so she's not available to teach our kids. Henrik Madsen's, do you think Kaman's silence about Tebru is hurting them? I know I did not back Zombicide Second Edition, but I would have if they knew they'd be supported on Tebru. I don't think Tebru is their thing. I think it's an association with another company. I, don't, I mean, they, Kaman's got a lot of stuff lined up. I just played Scooby Doo from Kaman. Uh, really enjoyed that one. So, um, I mean, really enjoyed Take Off the Grain of Salt. I think it's a great family game, and it's probably fun for lighter game nights. I don't think it's a heavy gamers game, obviously, but I really enjoyed it and planning backing that and probably the whole trio as well because, well, Come on. Alexander Mel, well, you're a PlayStation or Xbox guy. Uh, not really. I have played on both. I, I just, I was always primarily PC. Nathan, Nathan Bradfield, I have three jobs like that. One is for money, one is for fun, and one is in the middle. So, so I mean, I have three jobs, one for money, one for fun, one's in the middle, but I, I can't keep this up forever. I, I have to eventually make decisions about life, life down the road. Nick Nick, great channel. Love the new openers. Pretty nice. So little suggestions. How about a close-up on the composite dice cards minis of board games you're reviewing? So effectively, B-roll. Uh, B-roll is something I will be adding to the channel at some point. Likely when I have the opportunity to go more full-time or just put more time into it. Uh, right now, just doing B-roll is one thing that it's just another step in... I'm already putting out like 10 videos a week, so it's hard. But either way, I'll get to it eventually. I do want to. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, Alex Yang, sports. Same thoughts. Playing sports, yes. Watching it, no interest. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't criticize anyone. I mean, if I like 
board games. I'll watch people play board games a little bit. And and w- if I'm going to watch, you know, a bunch of people playing out some sort of fictional story, aka Game of Thrones or any TV show ever, why is it any worse to watch sports? I just don't have an interest. Tim D, love the channel. These games are expensive. Your opinions and reviews help me with making back decisions. Also, your pirate voice is terrible, and I loved it. Please do an entire video on my pirate voice. I, 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 me, I, I, I can't. I also try to add a little bit of something in there. I'm not, I'm not, this isn't my, my forte. Uh, Stenberg, we did this on, where are you getting, to, Alexander Mel, when are you getting together with Jesse again? I don't know. Um, we had plans to do it like in November. We haven't yet. At some point it will happen because, well, that guy's okay. Okay, Alain Brousseau. Good morning, Alex from Quebec City. Let me say, Alex, I love what you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Gabe. Okay, we covered that one. JJ the Great. What gave you the idea to start Board Game Code, the YouTube channel? Also, what do you hope is the best thing to tell people in making this channel? So that is a little tricky. I wonder I wonder how you... Because the first part of the question, I started Board Game Code, the YouTube channel, just as a social media augmentation to promote, to promote Board Game Code, the company. But then I just had too much fun with it, and it became its own thing, and it took off in a way that I never expected. So, I mean, yeah, it's basically I, I'm loving what I'm doing here, but it was what I'm doing now is never the intent originally. Uh, in terms of what do you th- hope is the best thing to tell people making this channel, I don't know. I, I What do I hope is the best thing to tell people? I don't have any goal of telling people inherently. My goal for myself is being in the hobby that a way that I love, and I'm in the hobby in a way that I love, so I'm achieving that goal. And yeah, I know the cable is just floating there. I see. See, I'm keeping an eye on the screen. Uh, this is just so I can stay plugged in. It's unfortunate, but I'm going to do what I can. Uh, in any case, yes, yeah, so I don't have any particular goal in what I tell people. I just want I want people to find value in the content, um, whether it's entertainment, whether it's information. Uh, ultimately, yeah, that's that's I want to be useful and not just here. Okay, Anthony, nope, we did that one. Nurse Rubin, will your wife ever appear on your YouTube channel? It'll be nice to do a like in Board Game Coffee. Yes, she will be on the YouTube channel. Uh, someone in a video asked at one point about, uh, one point they asked, they want to see my wife's top 10 list because I mentioned my wife and opinion of a game. And I asked my wife if she wanted to do a top 10 list and I thought she'd say totally no. And she's like, yeah, I'm down for it. So she will be on the channel. Then we have a uh, Warner, there's no evidence of vote. Oh, I'm not going to this. Okay, one second. <laughs> uh, okay, there we go. JJ, okay. Are Sandeep, are there any board games that you couldn't or didn't want to play because of your religious values? No, not yet. Um, I'm sure it could happen. I just, I don't identify, my religious values aren't subject to something someone put in a board game. So I'm just not really concerned with that. I'm sure something could be distasteful enough, but I think that would just be crossing a general line of distaste as opposed to anything specific. Okay. How often do you travel to Israel? What is your favorite thing to do there? I haven't been to Israel since 2006, I want to say. So. I mean, I can't. I I want to go. It's just an expensive and time-consuming trip. So it is what it is. David Sterling, have you played Valorant Villainy yet? Not yet. I'm waiting for it to show up. Senator Bro, I'm not. <laughs> I have people having a little politics thing in the channel and telling me not to read the comments. Um, so I'm gonna skip those. Uh, but don't, guys, don't fight. Please don't fight. That's not really not the point here. Okay. Are you interested in any periods of history besides the Old Testament? I'm not interested in any periods of history, including the Old Testament. I have an informational knowledge of it, but I'm just, I'm not a historical person. Have you ever played Kingdom Death Monster? What are your thoughts on it? I have not played Kingdom Death Monster. I hope to play it with Alex at some point. And now we get up to the 33 and a half thousand comments of no sound. Oh my gosh. It's so insane. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's what you need for an active window and a scroll for Q&A. Okay. Yes, I have the active window going now. Someone call his wife. That's hilarious. Okay. So someone did. My wife, by the way, my wife came downstairs and said I have no sound. So I don't know who did what, but something happened. Maybe it was on Facebook. Okay. Uh, board game, no sound. I was thinking that. Anyone, yes. Okay. I mean, my email. I wouldn't even look at my email. Jeez. Okay. We can't hear you. Now I'm just scrolling through all the no sound comments. There we go. I'm back. Okay. Okay, uh, where we go here? Game you love that you thought you'd hate. Uh, Zombicide is the closest thing because I think that I answered that doing the no sound part. Uh, Zombicide is going to be the closest thing in the sense that it was a game that I didn't think I would like miniatures games and I played it and I enjoyed it. I didn't think I'd hate it. I tried it. I rarely try games that I hate. Okay, then we're going to skip some more sound comments. Lost your Madara question. What was your opinion? That's what we left off. How much would you estimate you have spent on board games in total? Um, I, that, so it depends. If you count, so I loop my board games. I don't keep anything static. I, so I, I'm constantly turning games into other games, which means there is the answer is going to be significantly larger than the actual investment out of pocket. If I had to make a rough gauge of my collections value and maybe 
15, 20,000, if I had to guess, I, I could be completely off base. I'm just trying to make a, a general guess. Successful Geek. So other fields just arrived. I'm excited to play it. Not a question, just bragging. Successful Geek. I have Alter Quest, okay, behind me on the floor. Huh. Not a question, just bragging. Huh. Gotcha. Okay. Um, have you played Mandala? Yes, Mandala is It's over here somewhere. I thought it was over here somewhere. I don't see it, but I definitely had Mandala somewhere here. Anyways, I played Mandala. I enjoyed it. Okay. George Valdas, why do you get hesitant of backing when games start stalling? Either you like the game or not. No. Uh, good question, George. Uh, two reasons. One is going to be the fact that the, the general demand for a game is a factor in its resale value. The more hype there is, the more likely that hype will extend and continue past the Kickstarter. When you see a Kickstarter getting a lot of backing right away and then kind of flagging as time goes on, what you generally have there is less of an interest in the game itself and more an interest in the company, the company's support as people jumped in day one. Uh, campaigns flagging and stalling over time is sadly an indicator of that potentially happening down the road when you're trying to resell it. So it, when I'm on the fence with the game and I'm relying on how easy it is to resell it, seeing that drop in popularity makes me question, okay, if I really want it, I'll still get it. But if I'm casting, if I'm counting on the resell value, that lack of popularity will extend there as well, or potentially extend. Senator Bro, do you hope to do any collaborations with the Dice Tower? Not specifically, but um, I'm more than down for it. Obviously, it's a boost for me. They have a large audience. Um, I it's, it's interesting. I, I'm down for collaborations with anyone, absolutely anyone. But I'd rather I'd rather build people up than benefit from being built up, if that makes sense. And that it's not it's not, not it's not me trying to pretend to be magnanimous or anything like that. Rather, it's I I just I don't like the imbalance in power there. So if I'm on the dice tower, if dice tower has a top ten and they loot me in, then I haven't. There's an imbalance of power that I feel like. I feel more like I have to follow their rules, which I, I would, don't get me wrong. It's just I'd rather be someone that's helping others grow or collaborating with people of my size. I am certainly totally fine collaborating with anyone larger than me. No problem whatsoever. I would I would look forward to it because the people in the industry. But but it's just easier to to collaborate with people my size or smaller, I guess, or more appealing, not easier. Uh, Hendrik Madsen, when a lot of reviewers are talking about Marvel United being too easy and mainly for kids, a group that I play with really hardcore games actually are challenged in hard mode. So uh, Marvel United is actually pretty hard. It's not that it's too too easy in my opinion. It's that it does feel a little simplistic at times. And so that can be that can be the problem there. But I like the, I like what the expansions add to it. Byron Storm, how far away from Jesse? I am six hours away from Jesse. Piratey voice, yes, okay. Will you be editing, JJ the Great, will you be editing this video due to the sound issue? That's a good question. I don't know because it's being filmed on YouTube and it's live on YouTube. So if I could edit out the sound thing, I would, but I don't know what I actually can do to a video that's already live. Can I download it and re-upload it? I don't know how that works and I might mess with like analytics and stuff. So I'm probably not, which is really unfortunate. I'll probably include a big thing in the description about timestamps or whatever. It's unfortunate. I, uh, yeah. Alex Yang, Freedom 5, did you back it? You were on the fence. This is a question I answered when I was muted. Yes, I 100% I backed that one. That one, I'm still skeptical it'll be, not skeptical, I am still uncertain if it'll be in my collection long term. Uh, but long term or not, it is something that, whether it's not in my collection or long term, I believe it'll hold its value. And what I liked about it, I really liked, and I want to see how that plays out. Okay, can't stop looking at the cable. There we go. Okay, I saw you played Cthulhu Woods. I saw you played Cthulhu Woods. Where did you see that? Have you had a chance to check out Galenth or the God Wars? Not yet. So Cthulhu Wars is one that I have played twice now. I just played it again this past weekend. Um, I will have a review coming at some point. I want to get a third play in, but uh, I've not had had a chance to check out Glorantha. Glorantha. Okay, Andrew Corliss, will you start to review non-Kickstarter games at any point? Uh, new games coming to be told that are not Kickstarters. Yes, I have reviews of uh, Lost Wounds of Arnak and uh, Falling Skies coming up soon, as well as other games. Uh, Kickstarter is obviously going to be the main focus of the channel, but at least for now, until that continues. But I'm certainly not averse to reviewing non-Kickstarters. I reviewed Pipeline. I reviewed other games. I have more stuff coming. Uh, S E L S E L. Okay. Have you tried making your own game? I have rules for three games that I have written. I have not tried to do anything past that because it's far more work than I would like to, to play test the game, make a game happen than it is for me to just play someone else's well-designed game. Uh, that for me falls into the category of something I would do if or when I became a full-time content creator and I wanted to find things to keep myself busy. So for right now, no interest in developing them. And I'm sure they're terrible. I need to, I think they're just rules right now. Okay. Apple News. Have you happened to have any updated news on GameFound's new venture into crowdfunding? No new news yet, but I'm not expecting any. Uh, the ISIS Vanguard will be their first uh, Kickstarter on the platform, and that will be when we next hear a lot of stuff. 
Anthony Vasquez, it would be awesome to see you and your wife do a couples game with board game coffee. So yes, so that I actually debated doing having my wife jump in for that one as well. Uh, live videos and doing collaborations as a, as a format I'm still experimenting with and getting sound is also helpful. But uh, basically you'll see I have a tr another collaboration with a coming up Tuesday where I think I did a better job of being able to show stuff on the screen while showing people on the screen. I'll probably do something similar with board game. I, I have more collaborations planned with board game coffee and my wife might join for those as well. It's just all about having fun, really. Alexander Mel, what are your, some of the Fey games you are most excited to open when they were delivered to you? That's an interesting. What were the most games I'm most excited to open? It's going to be mostly big box miniatures games. I'm trying to remember like the last one that was like particularly exciting. Um, I mean, Project Elite, the Zombicide, Zombicide Invader was probably a big one for me. Uh, Batman, when I got it, hold that, that one I traded on. Tomer K, KDM versus Townsville Tussle. Having not played uh, KDM, I'm going to go with Townsville Tussle. Uh, also because KDM's campaign, and I am getting weary of type of campaign games. Hendrik Madsen, any unannounced Kickstarter games you know that you are excited about? Unannounced? Not particularly. Um, I mean, I, I don't generally get that much of a heads up unless I'm working with the creator directly. And even then, by the time I'm working with them, it's usually public to a degree. So nothing specific. Adam Schwartz, campaign trail guy here. Have you gotten around to doing any research into campaign trail? Uh, no, Adam Schwartz. So Adam, Adam Schwartz, are you are you from campaign trail or are you just hyped about campaign trail? Um, but either way, to answer your question, I am looking into, I have campaign trail scheduled for when the PM goes live. That's when I'm going to do a video on it or cover it in my roundup. I'm not sure if it's going to get a dedicated video or not. Alexander Mel, have you ever wanted to play a game but forgot where it was in yourselves and end up playing something else? So I just did a video uh, where I covered a bunch of games, and one of the games I covered was Magic Maze, and I can't find it anywhere. Um, so it does happen. It's rare, but I don't – I lend out games but infrequently, so I don't know where it went. But, yeah, that's basically – I don't know. So, yes, to your question, but rarely. Uh, best at Star Trek. Kudos to you answering questions. Paul J. What are the most unique games you've played? Games that have no comparison. What do you think makes them so unique? Uh, we're going to have Cryptid. We're going to have um, uh, Burnt Island Games, the newest one, uh, uh, In Too Deep. Those ones are going to be good examples. And they're very unique that they, they don't – no other game. They give a puzzly feel that no other game does in a way that I, I think does similarly. So – yeah, um, I don't know any offhand. There's not a lot of unique, unique games out there. Mostly games do their thing well, and then they provide some sort of spin. But like pure, truly unique concepts, I don't know if there's a ton of those out there. Uh, what's your favorite book in the TAC? Are you referring to the board game on my shelf TAC? I don't know what that is. Toma K, can you recall a campaign that barely got funded near its end? but you still consider it as good backing. Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch. I don't know any offhand, but it's just it's just one of many factors how well a campaign is doing. Uh, it's just, it's one of many factors. It's not a be-all and end-all. Generally, the more campaign is overfunding, the better a back it will be. That's true. Nurse Rubin, what's your favorite book in the Tanakh, the Old Testament? Um, Not none. I'm not like, I mean, it's a religious text for me, and I, I know it, but it's not like something I do for enjoyable reading. I do it for the religious context involved. Okay. Uh, how do you get successful geek? How do you get lighter gamers into trying heavier games? Uh, lie to them. No, 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 not lie to them. Uh, so, so it's going to be a slow escalation, I imagine. You want to try to find, like I've done this multiple times, and it's never been like with a great intent. It's been with me slowly escalating what they can handle, what is too much for them. Oh, you enjoyed Catan. Oh, let's try Istanbul. Oh, oh, five tribes, and you find what's too much, and you pull back. Ooh, Castle of Burgundy was a bit too much for you. Let's let's pull back a drop and try something else. Oh, oh, now you were trying Spirit Island, and you really seem to like that. And I have found fairly consistently that when they do cross a certain line, they have a hard time going back. They have a hard time jumping back to previous lighter games because they're starting to appreciate the crunch involved but it's really just a slow climb Santa bro are you much of a reader in either fiction or nonfiction recommendations um i have a top 10 list coming soon of my top 10 favorite books i used to read far more than i do now that's just because i don't have time it's nothing to do with interest so um yeah i i have a top 10 list coming for that but pillars of the earth and if you're waiting and you want to wait pillars of the earth read that book okay adam schwartz have you gotten tracking for dwellings of eldervale i did back it i haven't gotten tracking i need to double check that i'm getting that game I'm, i mean i know i backed it i'm not like I, i'm whatever i'm every once in a while when i don't get tracking a game people are hit i get nervous did i back it today did, did i go in at a dollar and forget to upgrade so i'm nervous i should probably check that danny sanchez did you back seventh continent only gameplay i went all in on, on seventh continent so i i don't think the accessories are necessarily worth it but i did go all in it uh danny the seventh citadel good point Corey, i'm late again hello and have an excellent day you too Corey. good to see you here 
JJ the Great, how does playtesting work? Uh, if you do you mean like playtesting my own game? Because if you mean playtesting my own game, uh, it's just a lot of work. You just have to like you come up with a rule set, you play it yourself, like you know, figure out. I would opt. I would play three sides myself and figure out how to play it, and then find rules gaps that way. And then from there, you expand to other people. But it's just a long time, comprehensive process unless you're doing a garbage job at playtesting. Dan Roberts, have you backed Born Sprint Cycle? Yes, um, I have backed Born Cycle. Yes, I'm. All, I'm well, not all in. I'm not going for the all in pledge. Alex Yang, Hogs of War, back yes or no? Thanks. I did not back Hog of War, Hogs of War. I was tempted, uh, but I wasn't pulled in enough to to jump in on it. Lottery winner, looking forward to the Arnak review. It's so much fun. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have nitpicks and complaints about things, but so far it's a blast. Gorgeous artwork. Um, it, I like Endless Winter more currently, but we're one play in. Um, and I think I will like Endless Winter more, and I'll get to why, but I am liking Arnak a lot. JB Gandalf, you should do a top 10 list of your favorite subscribers. We all know. <laughs> uh, no, JB Gandalf, that is a horrible idea. Uh, Raymond Paxton, Dire Alliance, in or out? Uh, interesting observation, be quick backing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that's a thing. Uh, Dire Alliance got a lot of hype from the people who are interested in the company and or the game, but not a lot of hype from people who are already didn't have buy-in. And so basically, yeah, they, they're going to um, Dire Alliance. They're... they're I'm currently out to answer your question. Sorry, I'm currently in to answer your question, but I'm keeping an eye to see how it plays out. Tokyo, I saw a YouTube video featured in Atlantis Rising Kickstarter, which is cool. Will you be back in the expansion? Um, Atlantis Rising Kickstarter? Huh, I didn't see my video in there. Cool, I'll take a look at that. Uh, but anyways, I am. I haven't decided what I'm doing. I have a dollar pledge. Do I have a dollar pledge? I'm on the fence about that one. I got rid of Atlantis Rising, but I kind of want to get it back. Lots of things I liked about it, but it's lot. no time to play games, so it's hard. David Sterling, do your content providers have an unconscious bias against campaign games because of having everything wanting to play more games? So first of all, David, I hope I'm very clear when I talk about campaign games that I don't consider it a strike against the game. I consider it a strike against my interest in the game. I hope I'm very clear about that. In no way is a campaign game a dig in and of itself. Uh, as far as content creators having an unconscious bias towards them, I imagine so. The more games you have to play, the less you can... If I get... If I get Lost Winds of Arnak. I have to play it, what, three times before I feel capable of giving a review? And I'm sure people wanted me to play it ten times. I'm not going to. I mean, I will play it ten times over time. But I'll get three plays in, and I feel competent. Versus if I get a campaign game, I can't play it three times. So it, it, there's definitely going to be a, a, a unconscious bias against them for my own collection, but not against it itself. JJ the Great. I thought campaign trail... Oh, lost the comment. JJ the Great. See, sometimes my chat jumps. I thought Campaign Trail was already on Kickstarter. Yes, it was. Um, I just missed it. I didn't cover it, so I plan on covering it after the fact. Kevin, have you ever played Commands the Godfather? No, it's on my shelf. I've heard good things. I want to play it. Timo Oberder, I already asked that in some of the comments. Uh, do you ever look into Dark Venture? Uh, Dark Venture is going to be on a video I'm filming today for Monday's Roundup. Andrew Corliss, yeah, Campaign Trail. Okay, Alexander Mel, top three favorite game upgrade deluxe components. Um, I mean, that's wide open coins metal coins are always a fan always a huge fan of those um deluxified upgraded resources always like those i don't know anything offhand minis instead of tokens i i, I, mean, I like deluxified games the specifics past that i don't have anything andrew corliss do you have any pets alex no i don't i have four kids that's enough uh raymond paxton i see your alt quest has landed behind you have you managed to get to the table no i unboxed it and did a video for an unboxing uh yesterday last night it's probably going to be going up uh on saturday with my reviews and whatnot but that's basically it i hope to get to the table soon but i actually talk about in the video my uncertainty of when i'll get to the table Zenibro, have you ever watched Ant Lab Games? They are the most professional couples or two-player channels, in my opinion. They are amazing. They are really solid. I don't, I don't watch a ton of their content because the overlap of what they cover versus my interest levels. But when there is an overlap, solid, solid content. Okay. Um, Cohen Wingents, do you play more solo games now with Corona? What are your favorites? No, I do not play more solo games. I temporarily did, uh, but it's it's not. I just I play solo games where, here and there when I have a chance, but it's certainly the exception of my gaming, just because I'm usually playing with someone. Uh, I see Jeremy Howard just here to troll. You see, I have my eye on both videos. So, Jeremy, thank you for job jumping in. Troll away. We're probably going to go for like another 10 minutes or so. Uh, what are your favorite simple games? Ooh, favorite simple games. There's lots of options. Uh, uh, there's a, I, don't, I don't have a good answer offhand. It depends on what the category is for simple. Lots and lots of accessible, accessible simple games. Uh, as Anthony Mel, favorite real-time games? That one I'll answer because there's not a lot. Um, I like Magic Maze a lot. I like Project Elite a lot. I don't know if I have any other real-time games I'm thinking of that I like. Successful Geek, if you lost your collection for some reason, what would be the first game you would get right away to start rebuilding? I hate these questions. 
Hmm. Maybe Terraforming Mars. I think Terraforming Mars provides a good solo experience, a good two-player experience, a good three-player experience, and a decent four-player experience. Um, and it's very variable in its gameplay, as long as I'm getting all the expansions. That might be a good stop pick. Adam Schwartz, I'm not from Campaign Trail, but I thought it looks incredible. Yeah, so I will cover that one at some point, Adam. I just wasn't sure if you were. You keep saying Campaign Trail guy, so I'm not sure. And successful, I see. I know you hate these questions. That's why I asked them. Oh, I assumed that you were doing it that way for that reason. Jeremy Howard, Sprawlopolis and Circle the Wagons are excellent simple games. Sprawlopolis is one of my favorite solo games because I can pull it out and play it in 10 minutes, which is often the kind of chunks of time I have. And Sprawlopolis and Circle the Wagons is a great two-player experience. Both of them have a solo and a two-player mode. One of them I prefer Sprawlopolis, one of, one of them I prefer solo, one of them I prefer two-player. JJ the Great, what determines whether a game is balanced when playtesting? Um, ask people who have their games play tested i'm not an expert i i assume if the variable strategies all have a decent chance of winning as opposed to being one clear dominant strategy because a single clear dominant strategy just turns your game into a a fun fest of who figures out the strategy at which point it goes in the internet and everyone's like well just go there and get wood don't do anything else so balanced multiple options that allow strategic depth and those options not being inherently one being more dominant than the other Andrew Corliss, okay. Uh, Stenebro, I noticed that you have a distinctive way of speaking. Did your parents ever make you go through speech therapy? They did not. Are you saying, and I'm, and, and no judgment, I'm fine, I like these questions, but are you saying that I have a distinctive way of speaking that requires speech therapy, or I have a distinctive way of speaking that makes you think I went through speech therapy? Both are totally valid. I'm not like offended in any way. I'm just curious what you mean. Nicole, hi, sorry I'm late. I'm glad I made it. Cheers to you. What do you produce on the channel? Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for jumping in. Jonathan Palermo, and I got another jump over here. Jonathan Palermo, I have been trying to get my 10-year-old to play Lords of Waterdeep. He refuses for some reason, so I'm making a Star Wars skin for it. He says he will play it. Have you any idea for a games that are similar to Lords of Waterdeep? So Jonathan, I think you're going about this the wrong way. Why are you trying to get him to play Lords of Waterdeep if he doesn't have an interest in it? Are there any other games he does have an interest in it? If, if it's a, is the question the theme, do you like the game? Find something that appeals to him and start with that because that's going to be your best bet. Don't push him into the things you have an interest in. And if you think that, well, it's just a good game for him to try because of X, Y, and Z, if he doesn't have an interest, it's not a good game for him to try. Find find some game, some theme, some something that simultaneously is the right game weight for him and he has an interest in. It's going to be your best option from, and then from there you spread out. Alexander Mel, how do you feel about having your videos on Kickstarter pages? I like it. It's good. It's good for. I mean, it's good inherently good for the channel. It's good marketing. It's good self promotion. Um, I I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, how do I feel about it? Special? I feel special. It's it's nice. It's nice to to hit a certain point in the channel where now my videos can be like I'm one of the guys on Kickstarter. It's it certainly appeals to the the ego aspect of what I do for sure. And again, good for the channel. Adam Schwartz, are you a keep the expansion box or pack it with the base game? Um, Adam, so 100% pack it with the base game when I can. I rarely keep expansion boxes. Uh, let's say AltQuest is a good example. I will keep everything until I decide it's a game for me because if I'm going to sell it, I want to resell it with all the boxes. But then once I'm sure of what I'm doing, I just pack, I condense it. Okay, Herco, I see AltQuest, yes. Favorite type of videos you film for this channel, Alexander Mel. So it's going to be topics. I love my topics. Um, they're not the best content I do in terms of the reviews. They do they do fine, but I like having conversations about things that other people aren't necessarily having conversations. Okay, neoprene playmat, best deluxe component. Neoprene playmats, yes. I, I don't like neoprene playmats as much. I like the premium feel of them. I hate the management and storage. Uh, Jay Raynor, do you have a favorite or preferred setting like sci-fi, fantasy, or horror? Generally, fantasy across the board. But it also is overdone, so I like the exceptions, like the occasional Western or whatnot that, that shows up. Okay, do you know if, when CTG are expanding the Hoffamachus? I don't. I know they announced that they are. I don't know any timelines of what they're doing it. Your video, Should You Back, it was actually on the Atlantis Rising Back, is via one of the Kickstarter updates, so lots of exposure. Must be a fan of Elf Creek Games. Aw, uh, I do communicate with Elf Creek Games. The only reason I am surprised there is I didn't do a dedicated Atlantis Rising Should You Back it video so i i did it in a roundup so i'm happy they sent it around i just i'm surprised i didn't expect that because it's a little hard to say like and here's this video where he touched upon one of our games so i mean i'll go check it out i'm happy about that okay alex yang game found versus kickstarter coke versus Pexy, long-term rivalry or will there only be one uh they'll both be around i mean they're not even targeting the same markets to an extent i think game found will slowly but surely dominate the board game space i think what they're doing they're going to do well but i could be wrong uh, Alex Yang, Cactus Town backed or not? I did not back Cactus Town. Uh, I, I want to get my hands on it at some point. I just didn't back it. Successful Geek, will you be backing ISIS Vanguard right away? I will probably be hitting back day one. They have they often have early birds, so I will jump in for that. And then I'll watch the campaign throughout and see if it's for me. I don't. I have no 
from what I've seen of the game, I can see it going either way. I'm not dead certain that it's for me. But Blia Kant Ruiz, do you think if a Kickstarter project offers the game in multiple languages, will it do better? An excellent question that I should do more research on. It will inherently gather more backers. The question is, will it gather more backers to the tune that it pays for the cost of Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, wait a second. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I heard a beep this time and something. I don't know what's going on here. I have no clue what's happening with my audio. Some weird thing. Uh, okay. And now we're back up. Let me scroll where we are. I'm going to keep going for another like four or five minutes. Jeremy, Jeremy, you said good to go. You see, Jeremy, you see, that was wrong. You're here to troll which means you should have said, no, we still can't hear you to completely throw me off my game. I appreciate your honesty and transparency, but I'm a bit disappointed in you. Okay, here we go here. Is Jesse threatened? Uh, okay, where are we? Love your content. Oh, now Cohen jumps in, we can't hear you, funny. Uh, love your content. The last three months you've become my number one source of Kickstarter news and advice. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. Adam, have you ever been a Twilight Imperium fan? I've never played it, I want to play it, I have it on my shelf. Just, uh, Alexander Mel, is Jesse threatened by Jeremy Howard after his appearance on the podcast? He should be. Jeremy, you were delightful on the podcast. Please come back. We had so much fun with you. Raymond Paxton. Uh, Alex, keen to know more of your family. I have four daughters. Okay, so I can't even tell me my kids' ages because apparently I would mess those up. But I have a daughter and three sons. And uh, my daughter will show up on the channel from time to time. My wife's going to show up on the channel. My sons, I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of whether I'll wait till they're a bit older or not. So we'll see how that plays out. Paul J, is there a game you wished you liked more? Many. There are many games I wish I liked more in terms of games that I, I I like it when I love a game, and I like it when I don't like a game. Either of those are a win. I get rid of it or I keep it. I despise it when I like a game and I kind of want to keep it, but it also won't hit the table because I don't I don't love it. And and those are all the games I wish I liked more or liked less. Uh Nicole, do you think people are backing more games to get the dopamine hit from feeling the interacting with others during quarantine? I think people back Kickstarter games because of the dopamine hit, but I don't know if it's specifically related to uh, interacting with others. Just Kickstarter has this dopamine cycle. I actually have a video planned as to what the how Kickstarter is the best addiction you can have uh, to a degree, to a degree. And also, if you watch my videos and you make sure that you're not losing money and back things that will hold their value, but you can build up this cycle of constantly triggering your dopamine hit. Back a game, get the update, get excited, get the game, get let down, sell the game, get your money back. You can build up a pretty solid dopamine cycle. cycle that is rewarding without being as damaging as other hobbies. I'm not recommending an addiction, but it can turn into a self-sustaining addiction that actually doesn't really hurt as much as any other addiction. Let's go for another few minutes. Uh, Kian Lin Fu, will you ever consider joining a team and designing a board game? 100%, it's really just a question. I have an interest. It's just a question of time commitment. If I can make it work time commitment, excellent. If I can't, I can't. Uh, Senator, I asked the speech therapy question because it does sound like you have a slight, I think it's called erotism. I just have to look it up. I don't know. Oh, so I definitely have a thing with R sounds. I never went to speech therapy th for it. I say that when I don't try, I say the word world. I don't say world. I can't even do it. World. I say world, like with a R. I roll my R's in some words. So I, I, my, some of my siblings went to speech therapy. They had it worse than I did. I was always on the fence on a lot of these areas that I didn't get the extra level of, you know, love and attention from my parents. Let's talk about my parent issues. I don't have parents. I love my parents. But yeah, so I didn't go to speech therapy, but I certainly have an R thing. Jonathan Palermo, Lords is my top 10 favorite games. He does like Mission Red Planet, Blueprint. He's tried Nemesis. Doesn't play Lords because he is just too stubborn. Don't push Jonathan. I know how hard it is. Trust me. It's not worth it. You will turn him off games. It, it is not worth pushing people into a game that they don't want. Uh, teach them, continuously teach them other games, and then drop hints like, oh, you maybe you'll let, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's a hard game, and, and dealing with a kid, too, is even harder. So I just don't, I don't recommend pushing it. Alex Yang, love this video. I'm, I, thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. Jeremy Howard, Alex, Jesse should be worried. I step on ducks and they, I step on ducks and they quack. Jesse should be worried. Jesse, watch this video. Jeremy Howard is the light. We want to have him on the podcast. He is excellent. Okay, sound cut out back. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna finish off the last few questions and then call this a day. 
a list idea for you. What are your top five chaos that scale well in player count and difficulty? Good idea. I'll write it down. I actually have coming shortly my top 10 favorite co-op games. So I just filmed that last night. But top five co-ops that scale well is a fun one. Uh, Adam Schwartz, I backed Veil Fate for a dollar. I'm still on the fence. Can you give me a 10-second elevator pitch? Why or why not? So I'll give you the elevator pitch as to why I'm interested in the game. Uh, it, it, Veil of Fate is a game that offers strategic deduction. It is a game that gives you the the fun of trying to strategically figure out what is going on without the essential aspect of actually having to know what's going on. The strategy combined with the uh, degrees of unknown are all going to combine to deliver experience that in many ways is unlike most other games. For me, I liked the concept of a game called Clans. I really enjoyed it, but I thought the gameplay was weak. Veil of Fate to me is potentially that concept, which I loved, but combined with better gameplay. And if it is, it will be a staple in my collection. If it's not, I will try it and move on. Um, let's see. Love to see in the chat, Jeremy Howard. Yes, indeed. I do like to see Jeremy. I like Jeremy a lot. He's he's so much fun. Jeremy is one of the most... See, Jeremy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell you for the last two minutes of the chat, okay? Jeremy Howard is one of the most delightful people in this hobby. He is always smiling. He is always happy. He starts and ends his videos with, like, what's up, party people? And you see he means it. He is... Jeremy, I, I love your stuff. I love your personality. I love the sheer delight and energy you bring to every conversation you have. Um, I just wish you had more of your own content on YouTube. I mean, I know you stuff, have stuff on Facebook. I just don't watch stuff on Facebook. I miss your old channel. I, I, I really miss the the you had your stuff you had your content i was a huge fan for a long time i backed a lot of games because of you uh and yeah jeremy howard is delightful subscribe to anything he's in subscribe to man vs. meeple follow him on facebook all that kind of stuff and we'll use that as a good follow-up wrapping up of this video thank you everyone so much for being here thank you for putting up with, with the like six minutes of, of no sound and audio on the video you people are an absolute delight and uh, maybe next time i'll start off my video with like putting my number in the chat or something like that so people can text me when things go wrong until next time you know the drill until next time have a good one